There's never been a game I wanted to love more than Alan Wake. It was developed by Remedy, who were best known for creating the Max Payne games before this, and Quantum Break and Control more recently. Alan Wake strove to provide a TV show level of quality in its story, alongside its unique take on third person combat. This game sums up a lot that was happening in 2010. Big budget titles were getting more and more interested in pushing for greater narratives, wanting to challenge TV and film on its own terms, with intriguing plots, character development and quality writing. Remedy had arguably kicked off this whole modern style of action adventure game with the Max Payne series, proving that games were capable of telling an adult story alongside a fun gameplay loop. Much what came after was heir to this revelation, and Microsoft clearly saw the writing on the wall after Max Payne, signing them up for an exclusive deal. Remedy wanted to keep innovating, pushing the quality of their narrative even further forward. Alan Wake does have some really strong qualities that make it stand out even today, though whether it succeeds in being a fun and engaging experience is something I'm still not entirely convinced of. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into this. You can always break games down into two broad areas, story and gameplay, and this is especially true with Alan Wake. It's a game of two halves essentially. Roughly speaking, the areas set during the day are for story and world building, and the moments set during the night are for combat. For this game to be successful, both sides need to hold their own, but whether they do this is questionable. Well, you had me going there real funny, Al. We'll start with the story. In terms of setting, characters, and broad plot, it's all things you've seen before. The Stephen King and Twin Peaks references are worn on its sleeve, and that can be both to its benefit and to its detriment. Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. Benefit because it is a tried and true formula. A writer struggling with personal problems, being tormented by an evil force in a small American town. It's a formula that's done Stephen King very well over the years, but of course it's all been done before and better. Alan Wake fails to go that extra step and distinguish itself artistically because of this. Load treading the same areas doesn't preclude Alan Wake from being an engaging tale, my problem is the messy story progression. If Alan Wake were a book, and I suppose it is, it wouldn't exactly be a bestseller. This is a long and strangely muddled narrative considering how relatively simple it is. So there's a shadowy force that seems to have captured Alan's wife Alice. He wakes up with a week of his memory missing, and sets about trying to figure things out. After wandering around the woods, fighting shadowy people, he gets picked up by the police, discovering that the place where he and his wife stayed doesn't exist anymore. From there, he's strung along by a voice on the phone that claims to have kidnapped Alice. Alice? Really, this is a simple pretext to enable the combat sections. The game needs Alan to travel through the woods doing combat and very light puzzles, so it's constantly contriving reasons for him to do so. The issue is that after that setup, a repetitiveness creeps in that would knock a lot of players out early on. Before making this, I had tried to play Alan Wake to completion at least three times over the years, always forcing myself forward and eventually giving in around episode three or four. The issue is the hook, or the mystery, isn't enough to convince me to slog through the mostly samey connecting levels. From the beginning, I know there's an evil shadowy force that's taken Alice. There's little to be revealed there. It's just filler while waiting for Alan to do something about it. There are some bits and pieces beyond that that they offer you. The idea that the psychologist Hartman may play a part, or that this could be some kind of delusion. Quickly though, these alternate ideas are refuted, and any intrigue dissipates. I discovered that there are some good moments when you push through this slow beginning though. Much of what happens when you team up with the sheriff and progress through the town is fun. I like exploring it, I like the world design. The fact there is such a well realised town is famously a leftover from when this game was open world. Years were spent in development intending this to be a sandbox, with all of Bright Falls open to the player, and you can see what remains of this original idea as you play. There are assets from that time everywhere, and it works in the game's favour. There's a sense of believability to these areas, things feel more lived in. Even mechanics are clearly carried over, like the driving, half-baked though it is. 
It's got that bad driving games thing where it sounds like the engine cuts off whenever you come off the accelerator, and the physics of it are just a little odd. Those moments do provide some scale to the world, however, and I'm glad they have them. I'm all for driving sections, even when they are janky as hell. Character motivations is an area where I find myself lost throughout the story though, and is why I say it feels kind of muddled. Like, why did Hartman lie to Wake? What does he have to gain? There's something about him wanting Wake's manuscript, but why? To sell it? Who'd you sell it to? Who is the FBI agent and why does he want to kill Wake so badly? Why does Wake run from the police? There's the red herring about the kidnapping with the guy on the phone, but why did he do this? It says something about him working for Hartman, but is it really worth almost dying combating this supernatural force just to get a rough draft for his new story? And why does he change the plan when you go to meet him at the lumber mill? It's possible I missed something, but honestly it just seems like drama for drama's sake, or drama for gameplay's sake. The thing is, the plot has an inbuilt defence for all of these oddities. That what you're playing is all just part of Wake's new book come to life, and to keep the shadow who's making him write it from catching on, he had to write it like a real book, with twists and turns and the protagonist always in danger. The thing is, I don't understand the relationship behind this supernatural force and what Wake writes. I don't really know why it needs him. Everything about the shadow's motivation is just odd. I don't understand what it wants, what its ultimate goal is. At the beginning of the game, it straight up says to you that it's not going to explain what the evil presence is or what it wants, because that's scarier. Nightmares exist outside of logic, and there's little fun to be had in explanations. They're antithetical to the poetry of fear. In a horror story, the victim keeps asking why, but there can be no explanation, and there shouldn't be one. Well, in this case I disagree. It seems to be more an excuse than anything. It reckons all the pieces don't need to fit together, because one, it's something Alan Wake bashed out in a week, and two, because not explaining things is better. But this just means that the story turns out much broader and shallower than its literary pretensions might suggest. So to say the story has a few twists and turns may be giving it too much credit. Things happen, but I was always wondering why, and like I say, there's something very muddled about things. A lot of ideas, but none deeply explored. Because the overall plot is so muddled, a lot rests on the characters to lead you through. In general, they succeed. I like Sarah, I like Cynthia Weaver, even Barry grew on me. I wish Alice had more going on though, and this is a problem because Wake is motivated to get her back, but personally, I wasn't. The issue is, her disappearance is what kicks off the story, so it can't spend too long at the beginning characterising her. There's action that needs to happen. There are flashback moments that aim to add background, but I always wanted to know more about their relationship. The whole plot hinges around it, and honestly, I wanted more drama. They have an argument or two, but let it be more strained. Let me guess at what's really happening when she goes missing. It's suggested by Hartman that Alice died and Wake withdrew into a delusion out of guilt, but they waste no time in debunking that idea. It just feels a little empty. For a game where not everything is as it seems, everything really is as it seems. At the end of the game, you save Alice, but end up getting trapped in the dark place. Some sort of shadowy dimension that, again, they never properly explain. There are two bonus episodes that are intended to wrap up the story and tease more but they completely fail in doing this, not providing a satisfying conclusion for the time you've invested. You're led through what is quickly becoming one of my pet peeves in games, which is the crazy stuff happening in the characters' minds segments. Life is Strange does this too, and they always feel like an excuse to simply reuse old assets from previous levels in the guise of it being some sort of mind-bending dream where the character tortures themselves. It's an incredibly boring way to end the game, and leaves all the interesting, likeable characters behind in favour of just Alan and this Zane guy. The fact it ends with you killing evil versions of previous characters, including Barry three times in a row, is just unbelievably bad. Weird, weird choice, that. Really running low on patience here. But let's shift gears and talk about the other side of the coin because as much as I have issues with the story, it's the gameplay that takes up most of your actual time. This is also the aspect I'm most torn on. Using light to defeat enemies is clever and appropriate thematically. You point your torch at them, throw flares or flashbangs, and then shoot when the darkness is gone. 
Feel the vibration on the controller and the rising sound as you wait for their shield to pop, then a few shots, accompanied by a slow motion effect. It's a satisfying enough little gameplay loop. There are a lot of these slow motion moments where camera control is taken away, and I guess they're supposed to create a cinematic atmosphere, but they get tired very very quickly. Holding up a flare and having control wrenched away so the camera can spin around the character is disorienting, and zooming out to show enemies have spawned behind you is irritating when it's the guy in front with the axe that you want to deal with. It also means you're never really taken by surprise. This certainly isn't a horror game. No slow motion action moments see to that, as do the completely broken survival mechanics. They simply give you too much ammo and it takes away from any tension that might build. You'll finish every combat encounter with the full 20 batteries, a bunch of flares and tons of ammo. I simply never ran out. At the end of each section they'll take everything away though so they can slowly dole it out all over again. Between this defence section which left me with 10 unused flashbangs, a bunch of flares and a shotgun and the next area, everything is gone, meaning you need to collect it all again, even the upgraded torch. The game is very repetitive in this, going through that same process dozens of times throughout. I understand why things need to reset sometimes, they don't want the player getting too powerful, but that's an issue they could address more directly, some fine tuning to how often you come across resources, perhaps determined by the AI as Resident Evil does it. Batteries in particular you start to view as just useless, they just keep giving them to you, I never ran out. Popping in a new one is only rarely a necessity during combat. Some sections will leave you bereft of flares and flashbangs, which can mean things get a little dicey, and I will say the game at least tries to maintain variety in encounters. There are some times where you have to rely more on environmental kills, for example. There's a section where you only have the torch, but it isn't long before you're stocked up again. Someone had left a gun behind. Now I had a fighting chance of reaching the farm. The problem with Alan Wake though, and there may be loads who disagree with me here, is that it's just not fun. The combat isn't far off from being satisfying, but it just repeats over and over. It can be frustrating at times too, there's no real cooldown between attacks, so you can get hit all at once by a bunch of them, taking all your hit points away in the span of seconds. And it's on purpose for the most part, I'm sure. It wants the combat to be frantic, for there to be a fast pace, forcing you to use everything at your disposal and quickly, but I'm not sure it's for me. It can feel a little unfair for the defensive player. I've been playing their most recent game, Control, and that has a similar feel. You need to keep up the pressure or you can't get your health back. They also annoyingly spawn enemies in waves all around you in the same way that Alan Wake does. Thing is, I'm just not sure I enjoy Remedy's combat design at all really. It just feels a little token, something they feel they need to include or people won't be interested in the story they want to tell, but recent adventure games like Life is Strange prove that isn't the case. You could absolutely transfer Alan Wake's tale into a game like that. There are some parallels to Life is Strange I noticed actually, taking inspiration from the same places with its supernatural shenanigans in a Pacific Northwest town, lighthouse motifs and episodic design. But Alan Wake's story probably isn't strong enough to really stand on its own. I don't want to be completely down on it because I do actually think Alan Wake is a good game overall. There's an excellent attention to detail and things to discover in the leftover open world moments. Atmosphere and world building is always solid and character designs feel real. The radio and TV shows are a quality addition too, it lets you stop for a bit and take in the atmosphere, take it slow, again similar to Life is Strange. These moments can create a disconnect from the character load. This isn't a problem exclusive to Alan Wake by any means, but when the character says there's no time to lose and the game places a radio in front of you with a two minute long show to listen to, I'm always unsure what it wants me to do, should I listen or not? Having the collectibles actually add to the world building and the current story is a good idea. A lot is the radio and the TV shows, but the manuscript pages are the most prominent. They're not really something just for the collector either, they're actually fairly essential to the game, especially later on, so they'll really push them on you. I do like that they clue you into what's going to happen next or fill in some gaps though. It's a weird way of doing things but I do like it. Like when you leave Barry in the police station making calls while you go off, then you find a page describing how he's come under attack. It all makes sense when you see him later on. Oh God. So like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not sure there's ever been a game I wanted to love more than Alan Wake. 
There's a very good reason I gave it three attempts back in the day. I liked what it was trying to do. I like the idea of a psychological thriller that you can play through. I like the setting. I like the literary references. But equally, there's a very good reason my interest fizzled out every time. It's an ambitious game, and though perhaps not as influential as Max Payne, it still represents a time when games were struggling through an identity crisis, a new form of media figuring out its place alongside film and TV. Alan Wake is about as long as the season of a TV show, but its obligations to gameplay hold back its capacity to properly characterise its characters, and therefore fails to reach the quality it's aiming for. That middle section really dips low because of it. There's only so many times you can torch and then shoot someone before it turns to merely chore. It seems constant repetition in a mystery story doesn't make the player want to know more. It makes them wonder if this whole thing has anything to say at all. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. I'm on a weekly upload schedule right now, so it's a good time to subscribe. Leave a comment about your experience with this game if you've played it, and uh, have a look at my other essays on Dead Space and Modern Warfare 3 if you enjoyed this. It's been a pleasure. Peace.